Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Happy this whatever is day it is. Lextopia in the building. CC Fierce in this thing. Ah, turn up, turn up, turn up. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Lex? We're talking about death. D E A T H. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's any more to that. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. death, and we're gonna get into some questions about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. Why are we talking about this? Like, well, it's yeah. weird because you were like, "Yeah, you've been t- we've been talking about well, death yeah, lately." I will be. <laughs> <laughs> like some fucking we're weirdos. About death lately, but, but we act, <sighs> we have we've been having a couple conversations, um, talking about it. I think it's something that comes up in life in general, but also mm-hmm. something death that comes up in life. <laughs> it does. It's the end of that hole. <laughs> but also things that, I mean. We just, I guess, start to think about and mm. just start to look at your own life and mortality and different things. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we talking about today. Say a screenshot. Let us know you're listening at CC Fears, at Lextopia, Carly's Couch. Yeah. And also, please leave us some reviews. We like to read those. Absolutely. So we look forward to the engagement. And so I guess we're going to start this thing off just asking, like, how do you feel about death in general? Um, I think death is one of those weird topics is like you can, well, for me, I can like kind of sit and just think about it, but it's not like something I think about often, but it's always like a profound thing when I kind of think about like the transition and people not being here anymore. It's what makes you think about it though? Um, when people pass away, whenever, Mm -hmm. um, whenever people I know, wherever I see something, whenever Mm -hmm. I see all these school shootings and things like that, yeah. like people losing people, yeah. um, when people get sick, when people get cancer, like just the, a lot of different things made me think about it, but also just like getting older and realizing that, you know, it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, this is a question for you because it seems true to me. I wonder if it's the same for everybody. You know, there's death in literally everything we watch on TV and in mm-hmm. movies, things like that. And yet, does it seem to you, because it does to me, that you really do feel different when you're watching a movie versus when, um, oh, let's say, like, on Twitter, when you happen to come across a video of of something that happened or something like that? Um, Does it feel different? And why do you think it feels different, if if so? Um, As opposed to seeing it on Twitter, like, seeing a video. Yeah, like, we see it every day. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, you see it every day, but then when you see it and you really know that it's a real person. Oh, it's terrible. It's very different for me. And I wonder why when we watch people die, I I don't know, I guess we have cognitive dissonance or we know it's just not real. But Mm -hmm. I think there's still something to be said about, like, being able to watch that and it's like you don't, I don't know, it just feels like it's not a real thing until it really is real. Yeah, I mean, well, just for example, like on Game of Thrones, people be getting Mm -hmm. murked often. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, like, at first it was like, ah, 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 and slowly it's been becoming, like, more desensitized to it. You're like, yeah. Yeah. But, um... I think when it's somebody and most of the time those things pop up on Twitter and I'm not trying to look for them. I don't Mm want to see people die ever, ever. Mm -mm. Please. No. So y'all please stop sharing that shit. Yeah. For real. For real. That's mad disrespectful. And it's traumatizing for a lot of people. Um, but because it's because you know, it's real. Like Mm -hmm. on on game of Thrones, like, all right, like night, night King, whatever, all these things happen. But it's like in real life, like that's someone's like mom or brother or friend. But then to me, it still translates interesting because when I see somebody, I guess if we're talking about murder, because there's a million ways to die. But when you see that somebody has shot somebody or killed somebody, it's like, to me, it just bogs my mind. How can you not respect like life like that? Or like it, it, it's one tiny bullet. It's like a little piece of metal. And like Mm -hmm. the fact that that ends your whole life that to me, that's so interesting. And like, it's crazy, like how how fragile we really that's, are. That's what I was about to say. That this is the fragility. I think that's mm-hmm. so jarring to think that we're these strong like beings and we do this and we work out and we are refining our minds and learning and growing. Mm-hmm. But it's so easy to end our lives. Mm-hmm. Like we're like a bag of blood and organs. Yeah, and it's so easy. Like people get into car wrecks every day. Yeah, and, and it's just over. Happen. Yeah. But I asked you how you feel about it, and then with me trying to answer that same question. Uh, I, I definitely think that it's changed over time. Um, how I feel about death now is that outside of waiting for the meteor to hit, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just a thing. It's a thing that helps me. It's a thing that motivates me almost in my regular life because I do think about it a lot. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but I also have a weird mentality. Like I, I, I think like a paranoid person sometimes, like when I'm around windows, I think about like, Oh shoot, like I'm a target right now. (laughs) Like that's how I think as if I'm like Jason Bourne and I used to be a spy or something. But, um, yeah, I think about that or, or now it's so sad because of the fact that there are so many shootings. Like Mm -hmm. I've been to the movies and this white boy beside me, literally he stood up so fast and I was like, like but in my mind like the fact that my first thought was just like well that's it like I knew I was gonna be dead like he stood up so fast and started messing with his shirt Mm -hmm. but he was just taking his shirt off and then I was like wow Lex I felt bad that I thought something was gonna happen but you know it's just weird like to me seeing death so much and like when you think about how much you really see it you see it so Mm -hmm. much um, and there, I think there is a difference too between seeing it like within your neighborhood and seeing it just yeah. everywhere in the news because yes, we all have that exposure. But I think we do see it so much that I do realize like I could be anywhere and anything could happen. Like anybody could start shooting anywhere, a bus can fly over, whatever. Like anything can happen. Yeah. And so to me, that just makes me feel like, all right, girl, like stop wasting time or don't waste time. That's kind of what I think about with the death. Definitely, I feel like that comes up a lot in it's sad that it takes that sometimes like it Mm -hmm. takes death sometimes for people to realize life Mm -hmm. and to look at it but um I also actually think the same like when I'm in restaurants I don't like my back towards doors and things Mm -hmm. like that just so I can see like oh man if something happened could I get out of here but it's it's crazy that we think about that like kids have all these different drills now that we didn't have back in the day Mm -hmm. but um when you think about death does it scare you no okay did it you has it ever scared you I'm sure it has I, I'm not sure why it doesn't now. So I've also, <laughs> I feel like such a weirdo because like, I also feel like brand these days from Game of Thrones. Sorry if y'all don't watch that and don't get that. But like, I'm, I'm very apathetic about things that I can't really control or like, you know what I mean? Like that, if that doesn't have anything to do with me, like I just, I, it's not even, it doesn't matter anymore in my mind. And so I'm not scared of it. Um, what doesn't matter anymore? Like when you say that. Death. Not that I'm walking around thinking about death all the time. But I don't think it scares me. But I, I, I honestly, sometimes I do envision. Like I, I feel like I run scenarios in my head all the time. Mm-hmm. Or like I'm, it's like a movie in my head. So if I'm walking down an alley... Like, I might think, like, and actually, I wouldn't be walking down an alley, really, but whatever. Um, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I, I'll think, like, all right, if this were to happen right now, like, how would I feel or what would I do? And not to say that I wouldn't want to live or try to live. You know what I mean? Like, I'm be like, what you need? I, like, what do you want yeah, me to do? Like, boxes. don't kill me, whatever. But it, the thought about if it's over, it's over. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think about that, too, because it's. It's like I know people um, like death seems to be really scary for a lot of people. Like it just in like me, you hear about people talk about it, it seems really scary. But it's like I mean, rightfully so, I think I think so, too. But I'm like it for me personally, it's like if it's your time, it's your time, whether I'm or it's just the fact that there's nothing you to say about it. You know what I mean? And, ma- and maybe and nothing. You there can are do. ways to, that you could die, that maybe there's something you could, I don't know, do or something. But like. I, but I guess because I believe, like, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And so there's, like, not, like, I mean, it just kind of is. But I feel like it's scary, a lot of reasons, uh, for people because it's uncertain. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what happens, like, yeah after you die. You don't know what happens. And you're worried yeah. about your family or your kids. and That's true. You know what I'm saying? There's so, so much uncertainty because if you believe in religion, then you mm-hmm. believe you go somewhere after. But you might not mm-hmm. think that. Yeah, so you're right. There's uncertainty around you like what happens to you um your life and then also what you do leave behind so that i mean that is two things to care about if you have a family or um your friends loved ones whatever i mean that is something to to care about how they're set up or not set up if that's your responsibility Mm -hmm. um but for the most part and i i think that in most cultures there is some kind of you know something about what happens after you die and I feel like we we've done that because we need to feel good about, you know, what's going to happen or we need to feel good about our time on earth. Like it's almost like we need to justify why are we living the way we're living a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I feel like it shouldn't necessarily be scary, but that's also because I believe like it's just over. So (laughs) I don't necessarily think like there, Oh, there's some 
thing afterwards and now I'm a different being or now I'm in a different world or heaven, hell, whatever. Like I think it's just over. So that's also part of why for me personally, it's like, all right, lights out. So I do believe that we go somewhere after hopefully heaven, but at the same, it's like, I heard that quote that said, I rather like die, like die, like believing it in my whole life and then find out it's not real than live a whole life and then die and realize that it was. Mm -hmm. And so so that's what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I do think we go somewhere, but even if we didn't, I'm like, I'm going to live a life of purpose and it's going to be worth something. Um, I think that's why it's not really scary for me. Also just because like wherever people go, if they go anywhere, like I'll be with them after this. Like I've had some loved ones that have passed away. Like if there is something, I think about that. But do you talk about it? Um, I don't know. Why would it even come up, honestly? Like, why Why does death come up? And that's why I say at the beginning, like, we, we came up with this topic because we were talking about it. I don't really know why. Just just being like, yeah, I'd be cool, like, if this happened right yeah. now. But I think that also comes out of, mm, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't want to say you necessarily have to be, you know, I don't think you have to be depressed to just think about death. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have to be down to think about death, but... It's literally all around you. So maybe if you're more of like a realist where you like really see it, like even if you're a meditator or even if you have a garden or plants and you see like, like that's the cycle of everything that's happening all around you, yeah. that it's gone, it's done its part. And now there's new things that comes back. Exactly. So yeah, circle of life. Um, but I don't think I talk about it that much or growing up, I literally never talk about it. Like the only now, now that I honestly think about it, the only time I've ever heard conversation around death was because of church or religion. And that's it. Like, it's always that's the the reasoning behind doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. And that's I, it. I know. And I'm trying to think I, outside of religion, like when I especially mm -hmm. growing up, I don't think we talked about it a lot. There, when, uh, Whenever I was little, I was staying with my auntie and a lady down the street committed suicide. And so mm -hmm. I had lots of questions, mm -hmm. um, you know, like lots and lots of questions. And also when you look at things like the Holocaust and things like that, like yeah. when you see major like. But it's weird because sometimes stuff like that doesn't feel real or doesn't seem real, even though you're learning about it in school until honestly, like I feel like you can even watch like they have the, the literal footage and you can watch it and it still almost feels like you're watching a movie. It's, it's almost like you have to put your yeah you really have to put your mind into the, like these are these are real people like you have to tell yourself that I feel like almost to to feel it and I think we have gotten so desensitized to it, honestly what's interesting is like I completely agree with that and looking at historical things you kind of have to like get your mindset there but like seeing videos of people now like who really are mm -hmm. like getting shot by police or different things like I feel that in us like mm -hmm. I don't have to do it but it it affects me so much like seeing that mm -hmm. and then I start thinking about their families and like their life and different stuff um but yeah what's so if you don't talk about it a lot like outside of those constructs um what, what's your experience with with death like I don't have a lot of experience with death I remember like maybe my youngest memories of remembering death was one of my grandmother's passing I was maybe middle school age or younger mm -hmm. maybe elementary or middle school but that she was in another country and so I did not go to that funeral and like you know even with my family living so far away I w it wasn't I didn't really feel like sad if that makes sense like I, I didn't really feel like heavily about it and I remember a young lady at my church this was middle school for sure mm -hmm. um now that I think about it she's probably younger than I am now um but we were friends with her kids and she was murdered in a park by like an ex or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think that's maybe the first funeral I went to that I kind of remember, but I was still, I was downstairs. So I was like with kids and stuff downstairs. Cause so they didn't make us like my parents didn't make me like be yeah. a part of it. Um, 2001 a grandfather. Oh, Oh, I'm just remembering this as I do this. Um, so my grandfather in Memphis, Tennessee in 2001, October 10th, it's weird for me to remember that. But we went to go visit our grandparents because he was doing um, not well. And he was kind of like in hospice at the house. Mm -hmm. And we were there and he was just laying down and, and he was out of it. And they were like, oh, you know, just talk to him, whatever. And so everybody was out. And I think everybody kind of was going in and doing their thing, kind of coming out. And I remember when I was in there, I was like reading the Bible. So I was like reading the Bible to him because that was what was there. And I just remember feeling so sad, like reading it, because now like you're reading things that are like it's 
it's like really real right now. Like you're reading passages about, you know, like peace and stuff. And it's just like, dang, you're about to die. And I remember like when I was kind of done with my time, then he like died. So I was like, oh, <laughs> like that's the last, that's it. That's like he was just laying there and he's, it's like he saw everybody or everybody went in there and then he was just gone. And I just remember us being in like the den with my other cousins mm -hmm. and some people coming in with whatever and taking them out. And it was just like, okay, like it's it just, okay. But then, and I, I don't even remember my grandmother crying. I've never even seen my grandmother cry. I don't remember my dad, you know, or it, it was his parents, him really being like out of it, out of it. Over the next few days, I feel like people are so occupied with preparing a funeral and things mm -hmm. that everybody was just still like, okay, we have something to do. We're busy with this. Yeah. But then at the funeral, it's like, okay, like, you're sad. And and again, I hate to say it like that, but like I I'm not it's not like I was so 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 close that it was like because of that, it's just like like you said earlier, all the emotion and there's so much going on around you that like yeah, like that's when everybody was sad and crying or whatever, but I think that's kind of it. That maybe it was the first one I really went to went to, but outside of that, like I don't know a lot of people who have died that were close to me necessarily yeah. i don't think yeah um i have a couple but like my early memories like my great-grandfather passed away and i just remember like we were gonna go see him because they knew he was like you know passed mm -hmm. he was in his home but i just remember we got there late mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, i should not be laughing it's awkward but when we got there late and i just remember them wheeling him out and he was dead mm -hmm. and i was like looking at him like because i'm little dang no i mean no because i'm little and i'm like my, my mom told me he passed away but then i see him on this uh, card uh, and i'm like what's up yeah mm -hmm. what's going on um i don't remember his funeral but thank god because i don't really like funerals that much um mm -mm. uh this girl that i went to school with in elementary school she had cancer and she passed away mm -hmm. And she was there one day, and then she wasn't. And it in school, uh, elementary school. And I was in fourth grade. She was in fifth, I think. Oh, so young. Yeah, young. And she passed away. Um, but I just remember them like having those death conversations with us. And I went to yeah. Christian school, so it was a lot of scripture reading, a lot of that. I'm trying to think if, if I know anybody who just like just out of nowhere. And actually, now that I that we think about it, like yeah, I have um cousins and. Mm -hmm. But again, I I guess maybe for me, a lot of my family is so far away that. I honestly, I don't register it as much, yeah. and that's kind of weird. But I mean, but I don't know if it's I don't know if it's weird. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way mm -hmm. to deal with death. And mm -hmm. I'm like, my grandfather and my grandmother were the two that impacted me the most. My grandfather was whenever I after my junior year of college, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that one was tough. That one was really hard uh, for me. But then my grandmother's was like the the most impactful. And I remember when I saw her, cause she was cool. Like she was in a um twenty four hour mm -hmm. care facility. She was like living her best life. I would go like Emma, what's up? Talking to mm -hmm. her. And I went to see her in Oklahoma. Um, and she, I was like, you don't want to like make friends or play mm -hmm. cards with nobody. Like you love playing cards. She said, Carly Ruth, why do I need to make any more friends? I don't know these people. I don't want to talk to them. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I, I got you. But we were talking and. When I left, I was like, something was like, that's the last time you'll ever see her. Mm. And then a less than a month later, my mom called me freaking out. And then my grandmother passed. And she was trying to get me to come back up to Oklahoma from Dallas to see her. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to see her like that. I've already said mm -hmm, my piece. Mm -hmm. I gave her a hug. I told her I loved her. I spent time with her. I don't want to see her like that. Mm -hmm. And she, everybody was so upset that I did not want to see her like that. But she was in incoherent. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to see her passed out on this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but her funeral was hard i don't know how i made it through that and that's like when i first really experienced grief mm -hmm. and grief is interesting and that could be a whole other episode but it just it came in waves and i remember like i couldn't stop crying i was like one of my friends had to tell, help me like take a shower because i could not mm -hmm. stop crying like i couldn't get it together and so like that was the biggest one for me but at no point in my crying was it like like it was i was sad that she was gone but i was just so grateful for her and i knew somewhere deep down that she was always with me like the lessons the talks that we had like her spirit and so mm -hmm. it was just kind of yeah you mentioned impact and I think that's a huge part of it because it's interesting that there can be people who die and like notables who die and you can feel it mm -hmm. more just because you feel more impact have you ever felt a way about a death of somebody like I mean Whitney Houston or Michael Jackson Nipsey. or like you know what I mean like all of those people there's so many people recently I feel like yeah who have passed. Nipsey's was hard mm. was really hard but why um for me because i saw 
the work he was doing in the community. Mm-hmm. And um, someone said it best. They said, we didn't lose a rapper. We, lo- we lost somebody who loved us. And mm-hmm. like to see someone whose actions spoke so loudly, whose hands like served so much and did so much good in the community. Plus um, some of the work that I do, I, I like have just like met his, some people in his family and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And just seeing how much th- he impact them, like his daughter and his sister and just knowing how important he was to the community and to them and like to see someone's life in my opinion taken so too short so you're sad because what because they can't continue their work yeah and like it, i mean i just literally yeah, like what is I mean, there to be sad about yeah not to continue his work i feel like i mean I, and or it's, it's almost like you feel like they don't deserve it type thing i mean and but that, then that leads the question like does anybody deserve to die let me just a whole other well, or like, why would somebody who's good die? Mm-hmm. I mean, and those are questions I don't have answers for. But it's like someone, you know, who was relatively young. So when we think about death, it's like, oh, at the end of your life, mm-hmm. like you've done all these things, like someone who was cut short, arguably in his prime and did so much good work and had so many plans on the table to do so much more. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn, like that hurts. And so what does that make you think about um, like for yourself it makes me think about am I doing enough like for for me like it, it's, a, it's a mirror it's like okay you know he did all this stuff with his life and like am I doing enough are there things I can do to help continue the programs that he built and the stuff that he cared in like am I am I living a life that I would be proud of if I if my life was tragically cut short today like am I you know did I tell all these people that I love them did I apologize for any of the fuck shit that I did like any of these things like it makes me think about just so much does it matter to do those things though for me it does like if you're if you're going gone all this time without saying that you love somebody or that you that you need to apologize to like you haven't apologized to like why does it why does it take death for people to then be like, exactly. oh man, maybe I, I feel like say, telling this person I love them. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. why the fuck aren't you doing that shit already? And that's that's the thing for me. I'm very self where I tell all y'all I love y'all all the time, and like I say y'all is like. And, and so when we talk about like, do you talk about death? Do you think about death? Maybe think about is more appropriate because I'm not like talking about death all the time, but I think about not so much thinking about death a lot that I think about. Like, these moments. Like, I have so many moments of, like, self-awareness where even right Mm -hmm. now it's like, you know what? I feel this. I should express it or I should say this thing or I should do this thing. And, like, why wait any more time? Because who knows when that time is up. You might not have time. But I I think that it's it's so interesting that we always – not we always, but that we tend to use death as that's what jolts us back into thinking Mm -hmm. about, like – where we should be or what we're doing. Why don't we think about that all the time? And that, that I, I, I don't know. Cause we're taking life for granted. Like yep. you are moving through and just going through a routine and just doing this and doing that and thinking everything's fine. And Carly will be here tomorrow and this will be here tomorrow and that will be here tomorrow. And at some point it just won't be. And at that point it doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. if you feel something like, why not just express it? Yeah. And I, like I said, I important things should be important all the time and not just because it could be the end of it, you know? No, for sure. And I and think that, that's part that's of the self-awareness. Say, yeah. yeah, no, I must say, I think that's a self-awareness thing. And I say that like as someone who probably, who might say, I love you. T- I don't know if you can say it too much, but I say it a lot <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and express it. But the thing that really sticks with me is it seems like consistently death and big events jolt people into thinking Mm -hmm. about the value of their time and what they're doing and all of these things but what keeps them from continuing that like what keeps us from keeping that energy that whenever someone passes because you're not thinking about death enough but it's like um what book was what book was i reading i have to remember but i was reading a book and it was I mean, there's probably a lot of books that say this, but like living every day as if it, as if it's your last mm-hmm. and thinking about like, if I died today, would I be proud of the things that I did today? And like, would I be okay with this being my last day? Like if I were mm-hmm. to go out tragically today, like would I be okay with this being how I live my life and living your life like this, not just that day, but every single day, like setting a higher standard for yourself. I, I think I think about it kind of differently because that's almost like a fear thing where it's like, 
thinking about, okay, this could be the end. Like, do I feel good about today or did I live my best life? I don't think I think about that because there are days when you can't just be chilling. Like, I didn't have to have done anything today. You know what I mean? For it to be like, but oh, man, am I proud of, to, uh, proud of each moment? I don't think but, it has to be fearful, but it's like, I don't, I don't think it has to be in a fair way. It's like, man, I'm blessed with this time. Like, mm-hmm. let me use it to do things that feel good, that are mm-hmm. in alignment, like that I believe in mm-hmm. and have to be fear based. Yeah. And sometimes it's rest. Sometimes it's just chill mm-hmm. and watch Netflix all day, you know, yeah. like, so I, 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 but, but you're right to the point where it's, are you doing what you want to do and what you enjoy doing and what's, what, what really adds up to what you say like i think we can Mm. say all day and act like we we care about hustle grind doing this saving the world the marathon continues we can say all that because we know it sounds good we want to be that but then are you really doing that in your day-to-day maybe maybe not but like if not why not like i think it's just all constantly just asking yourself questions about you know where you are and why you're doing what you're doing and and that's what kind of everything always comes down to i know but I feel like I'm untethered soul is another one that has a mm-hmm. big um, chapter all about death because it says like death is what makes you appreciate life. Death is what makes life awesome. Like if it was something else or more life or more whatever, like, okay, who cares about this? But that's what makes it good. So when you think about death, it doesn't necessarily have to be some sad, fearful type thing. You're thinking about death and that, you know what, this could be over, but like, while I'm here, like these birds chirping in the background mm-hmm. and these flowers I'm looking at outside and, you know, like everything's beautiful and just enjoying that moment. Yeah. It's just about cherishing the time that we do have. Mm-hmm. And let's Cause it really is short. Like we're really die. so insignificant and like this speck on this country and this earth and this universe and this galaxy and this, however many millions or whatever <laughs> years, you know what I mean? Like, and how much more will go on beyond us and after us? Like, it's like it's pointless, but while you're here, do what you need to do. But in the grand scheme of life, it's like, I don't know. That's why I feel so apathetic about stuff because I'm like in the grand scheme of life, like you're just such a small part. And so not even to think so highly of, you know, like everything, like don't mm-hmm. don't think too hard about everything. Yeah. As we think hard about this. I was gonna say, <laughs> as we, as we, yeah. <laughs> but not thinking too hard, but also just like challenging your perspective and questioning like those things. Like, am I appreciating this day? Am I cherishing these moments? Am I doing what I want to do? Whether it's like purpose based or just pleasure based at this moment. Like is, yeah. Cause how whack would that be to die? And you literally spent the whole time complaining or you spent the whole time hoping for something else or wishing for something else. Like, and again, at that point it may just be like, who cares? It's over. It's a wrap lights out, but (laughs) I don't know. It's just like, what was the point? I just wanna, make it a point. I just want my life to feel good. Like there's another quote, quote master. I'm gonna work on that. But, <laughs> um, I don't want to live the length of my life, but the width and the breadth of it also. Like I want to live every single corner of whatever time I have here in my little speck. I want to live all of it and feel good and enjoy it. Like I. But I'm also not sure that I feel like when I die, I need it to be a big deal. Like, oh my gosh, such a legacy and this and that. Like. I don't know if I necessarily need that as much as I just need to have done what I could do. Like even on a small level, mm-hmm. people right around me, whatever, like, I don't know. Just, just giving that. I feel like that's the key to everything. Um, but for you, like, how do you, I don't want to say, how do you envision your death? That's kind of morbid. And I, and I always am like saying stuff too. When people ask yeah. me about, about like, how am I doing or whatever? I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. Like, but I'll say weird shit. Like, like, But, you know, if Meteor came today, I'm cool. Or I was with my friend in New York, and I was like, they're like, dang, you wouldn't, like, try to hide, run? I'm like, I mean, I'm going to try to live. But, like, (laughs) if it's a a rap, it's a rap. Like like I said, if somebody pulls a gun out on me, okay, cool. Like, I'm good. Like, I feel good about it, honestly. Yeah. Not in I want it, hoping for it, but if it's over, it's over. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's over. It's over. How do you feel like, um, not you want to go out, but because that's kind of <laughs> like to go out. doing too much. <laughs> but like when you die, what is that? What do you feel like that would look like? Man, I I want to live a long life and have like do like fulfill my purpose for my life. And however big or small Why? that is. Do you think it takes 100 years to fulfill your purpose? Uh-uh. No, long, long is very objective. It doesn't have to be very long. You can fit a lot into 50 years. Like that's the that's mm. the thing is that young people, 
and I'm cause we're young people, is we don't understand time. Like when you think about fifty years, that is a long time. Like, it, but it's also not, you know what I mean. But is, then also, is, like 120 not. years is like nothing, you know. Yeah. It, it really is it's how you look at how, it. It's a perspective about everything, and that's yeah. why I say long. Yeah. Like I don't even know what that looks like, but like ideally, I want to have like I want to get married and have kids and grandkids and all those things. Like I bet, like building a family, like that stuff, like does matter to me. So okay, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because. Some people are afraid of death because of what they haven't done yet or what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so that may be part of a goal of your life is I want to have a family. I want to be a mom. Mm -hmm. I want to do this and that and have grandkids. And and I think that is valid. That's a valid reason to not want to go or, you know what I mean, to, like, mm -hmm. be afraid of, of death. Or if you have kids, like, I want to see my kids grow up or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that could be a thing. And I think that's something that I personally don't have. Like, I, you know, it, it's like... I'm not afraid of that because of what I haven't done yet either. So yeah. I think that's kind of interesting. I think I'm with you. Like, I'm not scared. Like, I know that if it's my time, it's my time. And if I mm. didn't do those things, like, it mm. is what it is, fam, at the end of the day. But I would like to do that. Like, if I, like, when you said envision it, envision how I go out in a blaze of glory in my own bed. Well, <laughs> I know I'm going to die in my own bed, but. Like, just asleep? Like, yeah, yeah, just fall asleep. Like, my family caring about me. But I don't want like the funeral stuff after like i don't want all that like just have a big ass party in my name and call it i feel a like day. that's almost like weddings like it ain't about you either in a <sighs> weird true. way it's like it's about you but it's not about you you know what i mean like everybody <laughs> yeah. needs i feel like and just like how you mentioned um nipsey earlier i think a lot of times some people need to come together and talk about stuff for them mm -hmm. it that's ain't true. about you it ain't for you it ain't about you sometimes people just are need to have conversations about yeah. you and what you meant and what you did or feel like they're remembering you and that does something for them. Yeah, could they do that at a party instead of a funeral? Some people, I mean, I mean, that's just a lot question. of people do like, have those types of funerals also, where they try to keep it hype and it's like a it's like a, a party. Celebration is a, mm -hmm. like a celebration of life as opposed to like this uh -huh. terrible memorial. But it's still you're gone, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's so like I can't yeah, you can't after fake I'm dead, it. I can't control it. Yeah, it's like you can't <laughs> fake like Oh, it's a celebration of life. But niggas know you're dead. Like, <laughs> you're not here. <laughs> you're not going to pop up in the VIP. Like, <laughs> and if you do, I'm out. Like, that's it. It's, it's a wrap. Um, you know what's weird is all y'all talk about me like that. I'm, like, y'all going to be here after I am. Like, I was telling you. Right. <laughs> like, you pop up, I'm out. Like, I was talking to Felicia and she was like, she was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to show up to your, she was like, your big party in a fern. I was like, oh, bitch, so you still going to right. be alive? Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. So that's crazy. Carly so. going to take everybody out at the same time. We already know what's going on. She's going to be like, not me, by myself. <laughs> How do you feel about being buried versus cremated I don't versus be whatever buried. else? I don't I don't want to be buried and embalmed. Why? All those things. First, like, I don't know, maybe because I was scarred going to a funeral when I was little. Like, that just creeps me out. They don't, I don't look like them. It it's, like it's not them. It's like it's not, not them. Because this is just a shell for my soul. Like, once mm. my soul's gone, this is not not this is my human show um and i feel like it's a lot of money it's a heavy financial burden and i, oh, I hear cremating it, it could be more really yeah oh that's interesting so every they're gonna this, find a way like everything is expensive as hell thing, like this new age artist world because millennials have figured out a way when people die to bury them and then you become a tree mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. so it's something i don't know something useful but i don't i would prefer not the whole casket thing and into the ground like i don't i don't want to do any of that um how do you want to go out flex <laughs> how do I want to die? Mm -hmm. If you if you had a mm. choice, not like that you've actively thought, but like if you had your pick. Oh man! Well, I know how I don't want to die. Okay. I I don't want to be sick, like to where I'm just kind of drugged up in there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know what? I'm I'm sorry. I'm going away a little bit from you asking me, but this reminds me also one of the creepiest convos I've had in recently, like a couple of months ago. My parents were so hyped about their living will that they made that they're like calling me like, Lex, we got to talk to you about this will. You're the you're the uh, I forgot the name of it. You're the main person who yeah, the person to carry it out for us, but not to get anything, but like to carry out their their oh, will if okay. they're like in the hospital yeah. or something. Right. But they were hyped because my mom was like, yeah, so what we want you to do now. So make sure. You know, if, if if we can't breathe on our own, can't do anything, man, just go ahead and pull the plug. But, you know, if you feel like there's hope, you know what I mean? Like, you might have your own feeling. Just go with that. Like, they were really talking to me. And I'm I'm just like, it's fucking creepy because I'm like, ugh, like, yeah. and I kind of irritate and have an attitude. But I'm like, it's because I'm like, I don't want to think about my parents dying. Like, mm -hmm. as you see people die, and then it gets to your parents and you're like. I don't want to think mm -hmm. about that, y'all, first of all. But then it was kind of funny, too, that Ashton was there, my brother, and he was like, oh, why y'all ain't chose me? <laughs> and my mom, but then I felt oh, some no. kind of way because my mom was like, 
well, we feel like Lex is the less emotional one. <laughs> we, feel like, we feel like Lex is less emotional. And, you know, she's just going to do what needs to be done. And I was like, okay, like, y'all think I don't care? Like, that's still kind of whack. Right. But I'm like, but that was kind of funny <laughs> to me because I'm like, dang, do people really think I, like, don't care about stuff? But but that's hard to think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, going back to, to how I want to yeah. die. And I thought about that because of the whole sick thing and being, like, I don't want to be on life support and all that. Like, just get me out of here. I mean, there's, real quick, there are some other, like, I was reading an article at the saying, um, it's first of all, it said that more people died taking selfies last year than sharks killing wow. people. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine. But then imagine. also, um, somebody died I've almost died <laughs> doing that shit, falling in the street and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, a coconut fell on somebody and killed them on an island, like a tropical oh island. God. I was like, you know, you, never you gotta know. pick a way. You never like, know. Like that ain't that ain't the top ten worst. I think I don't want to drown. That seems I fucking crazy. Do that God no. Um, you could shoot me. Car accident seems scary because it's like I, don't do that I feel like you feel all the scraped up stuff. I don't know. I don't like that. Okay, instead of ways you don't want to, <laughs> what about ways? What's the, what's what is an acceptable way too? Okay. I don't you, know. Or like that you something would like, quick. You wouldn't mind. Okay. Chopping block. I don't care. Just something quick. You can Ned Stark me for all I care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, as long as I'm out of here very quickly. Yeah, um, I don't want it to be and, prolonged. And with afterwards, I either want to go two ways. I'm not a fan of the whole, f- like, funeral and get buried in a casket thing. But it would be fire if I had, like, a whole crypt, like, kind of thing. Like, last name, crypts, and, like, everybody, like, gets to be down there for real. Like, it was, like, super cool on oh, all this like land. Mausoleum? Yeah, like, on Game of Thrones, like, we had the whole family crypts. That'd be kind of oh. cool. Um, but outside of that, like just cremate me and like, yeah, just throw it in the wind or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like that's like you said, like, I don't, I'm not here, so I don't care. Um, I want, maybe I should just tell people to do what they makes them feel good. Honestly, like whoever is my next of whatever, who thinks they can control it, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. You're going to have to think. I don't care. I'm not here. Your executor or executor. I, I did used to be afraid of like being a ghost though uh casper is <laughs> one of the scariest movies of all time <laughs> to me ghost I'm dad sorry. is scary as hell to me like that's just scary me to scared death of being a ghost? well i would i was scared to like do you become a ghost like i don't know what that's just scary yeah like are you stuck were you scared like but now i don't stuck? think that shit happens yeah okay. but like ghost dad to me was creepy because it's like damn the dad died and he's like it was just creepy to me i do didn't you, like that do you believe in ghosts like people like spirits i don't know that's a mm-hmm. hard one because I want to maybe, but I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. If somebody said they saw a ghost, I'd be like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be like, no, they don't exist. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna be like that. Um, okay. I believe in that more than I believe in some of the, like, after you die stuff. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it said before the Bible switched in the middle and started talking about heaven when it didn't before. There was no place. There's the grave. That's right. all it ever said. Yeah. Well, because people couldn't go to heaven until Jesus came, right? Technically. So what was happening all those oh, years? <laughs> they going to the earth. And doing what? Dying. I don't know. I about I don't think I don't think they went anywhere, but I know after he came then they So you think everybody was just hanging heaven. around? Then all those people could go to heaven. Like I said, I have no idea. That's what I want to talk about when we have our religious Ooh, <laughs> episode. I can't wait for that one. Just because it's like why do people think what they think and like so much stuff has just changed over time yeah. and because of people that it's like, all right. Yep. But there's, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, but I'm not, I feel like I'm not scared of death. I'm cool with it. I don't want to, I'm more scared of pain. Maybe that's the thing. I'm more scared of pain mm-hmm. than death. Like, I don't, I just don't want to be in pain. I don't want to be in, like, turmoil. I don't want to get, like, um, tortured or anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more, I don't know if a phrase the right word, of the death of people close to me and around me. Yeah. And that I don't want to see them gone. And maybe not even just that. It's just, I don't know. There's just some other emotion around it. And I think, again, it, it jars something within you less more than it, it's, it's not always just about them being gone. Sometimes it's just, it, it just jars a lot of things, like, and a lot of questions. And it just irritates everything kind of within you. I think those questions can be really good, though, to explore. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, exploring. And if you ask yourself them regularly, like, we kind yeah. of do, and, like, we be doing in the podcast, like, yeah. I ask myself a lot of weird-ass questions every day. And so I'm always asking that. So it doesn't take certain things for me to Same. think about that. I think about that, too. And, like, that's why I'm not scared to, like, say things. Like, say mm-hmm. I love you or say mm-hmm. things like that because – like you literally, and not only like I'm not only saying them because I'm like, well, I don't know when I'm gonna die, but it's like because if I love you, I love you. If I miss you, I'll call you. If I want to see you, like, hey, let's hang out. Like, just why do people wait? Mm-hmm. So, don't wait, cause death don't wait. 
Um, what else we got? Is that kind of it? Uh-huh. That's kind of it. I think we've depressed y'all enough. Yeah, no depression. <laughs> but that was actually the question of the week is... Is what? How do you want to die? Oh, dang. So if I had to choose a... Man, let me think out. Like, if I had to choose a way do, to die... Do, 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 do. Man, that's so, weird. Ha- I so would want to die. I would, I would want to die. <laughs> die. I'm trying to think of something interesting. With I'd want to die with my love or like with my husband or my guy or group or whatever. <laughs> it is. Damn, Our team. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not my team. Nah, at that point, they don't, that, that's not important. <laughs> but I don't know how though. What if a boulder crushed you like a crash bandicoot or something cool? I like, was thinking like Mario Kart, like when all the taco boulders, they were falling. Oh man. I don't know. But car accidents creep me out. So like, I'm not feeling that. No, People's heads you. just be on the other side of the oh, road God. and stuff. Okay. Like, all right. We gonna come back to Lex. <laughs> oh, do you know how you want to die? I told you. Who came up with that question? You. Oh, no, I don't want to just go to sleep. That's, oh man. So if I, so if it's, I mean. I guess so. That's not bad. That's yeah. not a bad way to go. And you I know what? It, it's so crazy because. We got like literally close our eyes right now and not open them. Like that's really that's, how shit that's works. That's how shit works. That's really how that so shit can go. It has to be like one of three ways. Like one, like really peaceful, like family, all those things. Mm-hmm. Two, like shit, I'm on an island and a coconut falls and hits me when I'm older. Oof, of course, I don't I want a really blunt impact. It. I mean, but you don't feel nothing. I think you just die. Yeah, you're right. Um, or the last one is like on a like super spy mission, and you know what I'm saying something might not go my get way. Sniped. Yeah, yeah. As long as hit it's me quick. with the headshot. <laughs> I'm out of here. It's quick. I'm gonna be like. Phew. Oh, God. Okay, well, <laughs> with that being said, y'all, screenshot, hashtag Carly's Couch, at Carly's Couch on Instagram and Twitter. Also, please leave us a review mm-hmm. and let us know your thoughts on death. Like, is this something yeah. you think about? I want to know what you think about death and even yeah. what you think about listening to this episode because it's like, damn, why are these bitches laughing about death? But, like, you know what I mean? Like, I is that... mad awkward for Because do some people funny. think like that or... Or are you like, you know, this should be more serious? Or, or are you like, yeah, it, nigga, it's death. Like, we're all about to do it. That's the only thing that unites really everybody. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, I would love to hear perspectives. Because when she was like, you know, I kind of talk about death. I was like, yeah, let's talk about that. Like, ready to go. And it's like, death is such a Because it's bad. Yeah, because I bring about. that up regularly, like, in Cabo. And then it, it, I always have to follow it with the disclaimer. Like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be morbid. But, like, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> it, well, not trying to, you can't avoid like, it. I, and I almost, it's almost like a joke. I'm like, damn, like, I got this this thing due tomorrow. Something I'm not supposed to do. Like, like it'd be fire if some shit happened right. Like, if a meteor was coming, like, please. Like, right now would be the time. Like, I'm Before good. I start. Right, like, I'm <laughs> good. Like, please. But it don't. And life goes on. And I got to get my shit done. Until it does. And then it's, that's it. Hopefully you enjoy life and enjoy what you're doing day to day. And cherish each and every moment. Yes, cherish and do, the day. Spend some time doing what you want to do today for yourself. Yep. Every day. Absolutely. Bye, y'all. Cheers. See you next week. <laughs>